सब्सक्राइब नाउ एंड प्रेस द बेल आइकन नेवर मिस एन अपडेट हेलो दिस वीडियो विल गिव यू अ ब्रीफ समरी ऑफ द बुक फर्स्ट एंड बुक 2 फ्रॉम द पोएम सोडेलो रिटन बाय रॉबर्ट ब्राउनिंग फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल लेट्स हैव अ ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन टू द पोएम सोडेलो इज अ नैरेटिव पोएम बाय रॉबर्ट ब्राउनिंग रिटन बिटवीन 1836 एंड 1840 and was published in March 1840 It is a long poem of 5982 lines and is divided into 6 books The poem is based on the life of Sodelo da Goito the son of an archer The poem reveals the troubles of Sodelo who is torn between the practical and the sublime between the demands of his poetic imagination and his involvement in the power and glory of politics Let us now look at the summary of book first. Browning opens by calling upon the spirits of deceased poets to hear his tale with particular apprehension towards the unnamed Shelley. In Verona, the populace learns that their prince, Count Richard of Saint Boniface, has been seized by Torello. Torello was tricked away from Ferrara, leading to Guelph burning his palaces in his absence. Upon his return, he seeks revenge. causing Azo and Richard to flee they later return to besiege Ferrara but Richard is captured during a parley meanwhile in a castle in Verona the council of 24 considers the city situation while the poet Sordello remains deep in thought about his beloved Palma in another room Browning depicts Sordello's upbringing as an orphanage page at the isolated Goito castle near Mantua He mainly roamed the surrounding pine forest and marsh with elderly servants as his primary companions. His understanding of the world was largely based on hearsay. Sordillo would often daydream, imagining himself as a heroic figure akin to Apollo, or pondering over the stone font in the castle's vault, fantasizing about freeing the statues from a perceived curse. Browning reflected that an ascetic may falter in life by either attempting too little or too much. Sordello's fantasies also revolved around the Lady Palma, who he learned was courted by the Guelph, namely Count Richard. Let us now look at the summary of Book Two. While wandering towards Mantua, Sordello encounters a crowd gathered by the city wall, listening to the aged troubadour Eglemar. Displeased with Eglemar's performance, Sordello interrupts and impressively continues the song, winning the prize and earning Palma's scarf. Despite Eglemar's gracious response, he returns home troubled and passes away that night. At his funeral, Sordello praises him, and Eglemar's jongler Nado becomes Sordello's jongler. After long hesitation, Sordello finally inquires about his parentage and learns that he is the son of an archer who saved Adelaide and Palma from a fire set by Saline. Disheartened, Sordello abandons his ambitions of becoming a man of action and turns to minstrelsy. However, he soon grows disenchanted and careless in his pursuits, attempting to convey his visions more directly through a reinvented language. He faces public incomprehension and personal exhaustion. Sordello grapples with conflicting views of poetry as a profession versus poetry as his destiny, leaving him deeply divided. Lady Adelaide dies unexpectedly, followed by news of Selin's second decision to retire to a monastery. Torello confronts his lord in an attempt to dissuade him, but fails. Consequently, Torello must give up his aspiration to join the emperor on a crusade. He heads to Mantua, where Sordello is tasked with welcoming him through song. However, Sordello, lacking in aspiration, returns to Goito, leaving Torello puzzled.